Today I wanted to talk to everyone about um, replacing music in Pro Tools. Uh, this isn't in Pro Tools HD. Now, in Pro Tools HD, there is actually an option, I believe, to replace audio clips, and that may be useful for what I'm about to show you how to do. Um, it may not. Uh, if someone can let me know about that, that'd be useful. Um, anyway, the problem I often find is that uh, when mixing audio for film, um, I will download some temporary music from somewhere like iStock. Um, and the problem with that is it has the digital audio watermark. Um, now you may want to chop it up and make edits with that music. So you can do all your chopping. It fits really nice with your uh, finished video. You then send it off uh, to the client. They like it and it's like, great. Okay, now I've got to actually purchase that piece of music and then bring it back into Pro Tools and then I have to remake all those edits, which can be quite time consuming. Uh, what this process will do is it will sort of trick Pro Tools into thinking that the audio files which uh, it's looking at are the original preview or the um, temporary music file. But in fact, we're actually just going to switch them out for the purchased music file um, and it will keep all of the edits in place. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that now. Right, to start off with, we have um, an iStock uh, track here, which is a temp track. I've made a couple edits, you can see there's edit here, here, here. Um, it's basically, I've just duplicated it because uh, I needed to extend the intro slightly, for example. Let's play that for you. iStock Audio. iStock Audio. So you can hear the watermarks in there. Um, but you can also hear that the loops uh, are quite seamless and there's no issues there. So what we're going to do now um, is switch this audio up for the purchased audio, which will remove the watermark. Now, the way we do that, um, when you import a stereo track into Pro Tools here um, and you start making edits, it will actually create two files, a left and a right, which you can see here. This is in the audio files um, folder of the session. So what we need to do is basically um, import our purchase track. Now you need to make sure, this is a crucial thing, you need to make sure that the sample rate and the bit depth, um, most importantly I believe the sample rate is the same. If you have uh, different sample rates, you can run into issues with um, the timing being sped up, slowed down, the pitch can change, it's all sorts of weird stuff goes on. Um, so you need to make sure that's the same as the preview temporary music which you've imported. So you can hear it's the same track, this is obviously without the watermarks. So what we're going to do is copy it into the session, click done, click open here. So it's going to import this audio file. Now we're not actually going to do anything with it in the session, so we're just going to stick it in the clip list, which we'll put it up here. Uh, the reason we've done this is what we can now do is separate this audio file, which at the moment um, is only uh, a stereo file, but we need to separate it into two mono files. So the way, the way we do that is uh, we export, so we right click, sorry, right click on the stereo file. Uh, we click export clips as files. Um, it wants to be as a WAV or whatever the original file uh, format was. The important bit is to make sure it's multiple mono rather than um, a stereo. Make sure the sample rate is the same. Um, then we can just click export. Okay, so now that's exported, what you will find is you have your stereo track there and you've also got your left and your right here and here. So what I'm now going to do, just to keep it uh, easy to sort of see what's happening, um, I'm going to take the stereo track and just delete it. Um, and I'm also just going to clear it from the session so it's not there. Now, so we've got your preview stereo track, uh, sorry, your preview left and right monos and your um, purchase left and right monos. What I am going to do is just open up a new finder window, put it on the desktop here, and I'm just going to move it out of the audio folder, stick it on my desktop. Let's just get rid of these so I don't need to see that. 
Okay, so this is the audio folder for the files within the session. Uh, these are the actual files which Pro Tools, this Pro Tools session is using to um, to play back any of the edits I've made here. So what we're going to do now is replace these two files with these two files. And the way we do that is quite simply um, copy and pasting the names of the files from the temporary music across to the purchase music. Now, when we import these into the folder, it will ask us, it will tell us that um, two files exist in the same location, which are the same. Well, they're not the same, they're named the same, but they're actually the temporary files and the purchase files. I'm going to click apply to all and click replace. So those files have now been replaced and these are actually the um, uh, purchased uh, music files. I'll just play the left hand side so you can have a listen. You can see no watermarks at all there. Um, so now we need to get Pro Tools um, to register the change. So I start. you can still hear if it's playing the old version at the moment which has still got the watermark on. I believe that's probably to do with the fact that it's loaded into the RAM, the computer, um, and it hasn't registered the change yet. So what I'm going to do is just close the session. You don't need to close Pro Tools completely, just the session, and then reopen the session. And then what you will find is that um, the waveform has disappeared. Uh, but if we play... You can hear that the watermark's been removed, it's all been replaced with the uh, purchase music. Now to get the waveform overview back, it's nice and simple. We go up to Window, uh, go to New Workspace. We choose the session we're working with, go to the Audio Files folder. And if I just highlight both of these, you right click. Uh, there's an option that says Calculate Waveforms uh, down the bottom there. Click on that, it will regenerate your waveforms. And then you're good to go. Um, all replaced and ready to send off to the client.